Hey, what's up everybody? Russ with RWGResearch.com. Welcome back to the laboratory where we're playing with this cheesy fan. Uh, so this video, I'm just making this intro. I recorded everything a while back. I'm making this intro. This video is really kind of just randomness collaborated into a video. The, the, the flow isn't quite all there. Just It's just information for you guys to absorb. And so it's documented. That's really what this video is. When we go further, we're going to be doing all the things, lots of uh, things to do and show you. I've actually already done a whole bunch of things. I need to go back, set them up, and kind of demonstrate uh, them to you. And that's what we'll be doing from from after this video. So this will be the last detailed measuring video. I did so many things that I had to document it all. So watch the video, have fun. And uh, the next week's video will be a little different. Maybe a little more interesting, but they're all interesting to be fair. This is a very strange configuration, so it's a lot of fun to play with. Okay, we'll see you in the next video. Enjoy this one. Bye-bye. All right, welcome back. It's a new day. I got this configured like this, as I suggested I was going to in my pattern here, which is chaotic, but straightforward. We're basically going from um, so I got coils 1 through 50, and then I got two coils in that one, so A and B. So A1 goes to 26 uh, A, and then that goes down to 3 A, over to 28 A, and then we get down here, we're basically at 48 A, so 48 A jumps back up, goes to 2 A, then to 27 A, then to 4 A, and then we end up at 50. So 50A jumps back up to uh, 1B. We go all the way down, then we come back up to 2B, and then we end on uh, 49B out to the outside, starting at 1A. It's a little confusing, but that's the way we got it. So the result for that is, uh, is interesting. Um, we basically got maximum amount of resistance or maximum amount of difference in potential. And what we're actually seeing, Malachi. Hello, Malachi. Okay, go ahead. It's not in here, though. You'll have to find it. All right, so you can see here we've done the ring test, and we've got a resonant frequency approximately of 345 hertz. And you can see the amplitude isn't as high, and also the ring down is, uh, it rings down very fast, so the Q of the coil is very low. So I think this has to do with the fact that I'm creating a lot of impedance due to the high difference in potential of the coils. So it's not exactly what we're trying to do, um, per se. It's not the same as adding a bunch of capacitance and having a high Q coil. So I'm not 100% sure if this is the best method to take. All right, before I uh, change this or disassemble this, it's the same way in the same diagram. And I thought I'd show you something quite interesting. So I'm gonna put this LRC meter on uh, 100 Hertz. Okay, so it's reading right now um, uh, 251.1 nanofarads. Now, what I've done here is I've disconnected the circuit right between the A and the B. So I looped back A, and I've looped back B, and I've disconnected basically A and B. So all the A's are in series, and all the B's are in series. But I've disconnected the A's from the B's. That's this wire right here. So I can actually charge this up which I will uh, demonstrate to you now on the oscilloscope. So I'm going to disconnect the uh, LRC meter. I'm going to connect up the battery. I'm going to connect up the scope because I had it disconnected here. And what I'm going to be showing you, what I want you to look at basically, is I'm going to charge this up. I got the time base running real slow here. So I'm going to charge this thing up, there we go, and I'm going to let it sit, and it's going to slowly discharge. So this is basically just like a capacitor, it's actually discharging as a capacitive curve. And if I short it out, boom, drops back down to zero. Now what's interesting about this is that with it shorted out, the LRC meter reads a much greater capacitance at those frequencies. However, when I've got the coil open, the capacitance is much, much smaller. Now I've taken my probe off and this thing does store charge very well, 
The, the resistance is, uh, do you remember the resistance of my probes, Richard? 20 mega ohms. 20 mega ohms. Yeah, I think it's 20 mega ohms. So that is discharging across a 20 mega ohm resistor inside my probes. With it disconnected, you can see it holds a very good charge. So now what I'm going to do. All right, a little addition to this video after uh, a lot of uh, work that I've been doing trying to calculate individual coils and figure out what their results are. I've realized that there's a bit of a problem that I'm running into and it is that this LRC meter um, is having, uh, well, I'm not 100% sure how accurate this is for one reason. It's because we have a resistance that is much, much uh, more dominant than the capacitance. So this LRC meter, um, although the data is uh, very useful, may not be exactly what we want. So what I've done is I've rewired this thing back to original. So this is the way it was in the very beginning of the series of videos. And I'm just going uh, and calculating and trying to figure out what the capacitance is when I put everything in this zigzag mode. Okay, so our LRC meter, all right, from our original to this one, really didn't change much. Uh, in fact, okay, here's the uh, original data there, all right, up on the top. So the lower end is uh, fairly the same as the final end, all right, I mean on the on this page, all right. So on this first couple, they're they're almost... I mean, they're almost identical. However, the end ones, the ones when you get to the higher frequency, change uh, pretty dramatically, actually. So, I'm doing the ring test, alright, I'm using the ring test, and I ring this thing, and I figure out uh, what the ring is, that is the resonant frequency between uh, the coil and the capacitance and the coil. And so what I've done is I've just added some capacitance to the coil, all right, across the coil in uh, parallel with it. And then I am adding capacitance until I get the right ring. So you can see on the oscilloscope here, we got about 378 hertz, okay? And that 378 hertz is also the same self-resonant frequency that I got here in my notes when I connected it in this uh, highly uh, capacitive situation, highly impedance situation as well. High difference in potential across all the windings. So what I've done is I've added that extra capacitance and I've gotten to six of these in series, did the math, that comes to about 50 nanofarads. I checked uh, the actual capacitance, it's just above 50 nanofarads. So basically what that means is that by going from the original connections which I got here to the pattern that I have on the document right there. We've essentially added roughly 50 nanofarads. Now it's a bit bit tricky here. I wouldn't expect the inductance to have changed much. It should have pretty well stayed the same. So the only thing we're adding is the capacitance and we get roughly 50 nanofarads. So anyway, just adding that in here because I've learned that the LRC meter here is a bit uh, finicky and hard to read certain things when there's such a low resistance. Um, if I add the uh, coil back on here, you can see that this meter completely doesn't read anything. And if we flip it over to uh, resistance, you see we've got 813 ohms. All right, so 813 ohms is, um, yeah is going to really screw up this meter because it's it's too low it even screws up this meter put it back on capacitance no go right put it back on resistance if we open up the circuit now we have uh, almost infinite resistance whatever's in the capacitance here and there you go back to uh, 50 nanofarads so if I disconnect the coil um, Let's see, I, I did this, yeah, I can't measure, see, I cannot measure the capacitance with the capacitance meter when I've got that high resistance, so, yeah, anyway, I'm just deducing the numbers here by adding capacitance and then ringing the coil, and it looks like about 50 nanofarads. Hopefully that makes sense to you, um, and uh, kind of explains some of the, some of the scenarios that adding 
the windings in different configurations truly does add the extra capacitance. Just This is the result, just want to share it with you. So on the oscilloscope you can see we've got about uh, 322 hertz, but our amplitude is much lower now and our Q or the ring down is much greater. I believe this is due to the fact that I'm um, kind of adding a resistance to my circuit as an impedance and not really changing the capacitance or inductance. I'm really just creating a higher impedance due to the higher difference in potential between the wire paths. So it's interesting because connecting it the way I have it drawn in this fashion on here versus what I've connected it here I actually can't even find the ring it's just so low and that is actually a problem because that kind of defeats the entire purpose of what we're trying to do so realistically we're probably gonna to have to go back to everything in series as regular by filer mode and basically connect everything with a switch and switch the frequency that we want to run at um, Richard here say hello Richard Hello. Richard uh, has a good idea. He said, why don't you use a mechanical reed switch? Um, not like a magnet driven, but a coil driven. So these are the reed switches that I'm using right now. There's one right there, and I'm driving it with a uh, other little thing there, which we'll get into in another video. But Richard ordered a few high frequency ones. These only go up to uh, 1000 hertz, however I ran it up to 2.5 kilohertz and it seemed to be okay with some jitter in there. But this coil connected in standard series brings us back to about 6000 or so hertz. So in the next couple of videos we're going to be exploring that. I did a whole bunch of testing with uh, all kinds of things here which the bench looks like a total mess, total disaster, lots of things going on. And we'll cover that in the next couple of videos. So uh, thanks for watching. God bless. Read the Bible more. Bye. Bye, Richard. Bye.